I'll try to be very short in my presentation, although um, I would have um, a huge interest then really to have an exchange with you in terms of uh, in terms of answering the questions which we might which you might you might raise. Um, Kosovo and Ireland are located on two different sides of Europe. They are very far from each other, but in my view, we shared. Uh, uh, some common experiences. Uh, our peoples uh, have faced a long, have faced long suffering, uh, like uh, the people of uh, Ireland, also Kosovars, were having a very long struggle for independence and for political and social uh, freedom. I'm here today uh, also to thank. Uh, citizens of Ireland for the support which you give to us in a very, very crucial uh, times. Uh, there were a uh, different part of uh, Irish society who were engaged since uh, June 1999 in building a modern uh, Kosovo. I'm very grateful to, uh, I mean, first to uh, members of the Defence Forces, uh, to journalists, to human rights activists, to many diplomats, which have been engaged in Kosovo for uh, years and who supported us in our path to freedom and, and independence. I had today a great uh, meeting with the Minister of Foreign Affairs. I was very much uh, impressed with his vision for Europe, with his vision for the Balkans. And in his vision, the Europe is not uh, completed without integration of the Balkans. And uh, I had also a very good meeting with your Minister for Europe, and I briefed them on the current developments in, in Kosovo. It is for me a great pleasure also to uh, greet Ambassador Doling, which is, in which is covering uh, Kosovo. Ambassador Doling is uh, based in Budapest. But from time to time, he is uh, coming to Pristina. And with us, it is our ambassador, Gretschewski, who is um, technically located in London, but is also the channel of uh, communication with you uh, here in, in, in Dublin. We are very grateful to your government for supporting us uh, uh, for many years. But uh, we are, uh, I mean, we are very, very grateful for the support which your government was giving to us last year during the Irish presidency of the Council of the European Union, where two very important decisions have been taken. I mean, the first was we reached an agreement with Serbia April last, last year, and I think the role which Ireland played in that was very important. And secondly, the European Council also recommended to the Commission uh, open of, opening of negotiation for a stabilization association agreement with Kosovo, which was actually a very, very important uh, development. I'm going to uh, discuss uh, with you tonight, for the first time, some of my th thoughts on smart power of the small states. And I'm aware that it's pretty late, but it is raining, it's pretty cold outside, and I think <laughs> I can have your attention a little bit for some minutes on, on, on that. Uh, smart power is a concept coined by Joseph Nye. And it includes a kind of mix, mixture of soft and hard power. And I'll try just to provide you with some definitions as a former professor of what soft power and smart power means. Soft power is the ability to influence the preferences of others in order to achieve some intended goals. While smart power is a more pragmatic idea, it's a more pragmatic concept. It is about making choices based on resources, capacities, and the likelihood for success. Of course, uh, Nye, and in his books, has reflected what great powers, regional powers, superpowers, could do with a notion of uh, smart power. 
What I'm going to be focused uh, tonight most, mostly in the case of uh, Kosovo and what Kosovo practice of the small power means. Uh, let me start by uh, setting uh, the context of, of, my, of my speech. And I'm going to uh, share just some, uh, I'm going to say just some few words about that. In my view, there are three reasons why we should talk about power in small states. First, Kosovo is the youngest state in Europe, and usually the birth of a state is followed by the birth of a concept. What I'm trying to say is that the job of the foreign minister and somebody who was teaching at Pristina University is to think long term how to conduct foreign policy, which kind of the parameters should have our foreign policy, to have a thinking on foreign policy, to have a strategic vision on, on foreign policy. Secondly, Kosovo is located in Europe, and all European states are somehow small states. This means that all European states are having the same framework, how to conduct uh, foreign, foreign policy. Third, small states are aware that they have small territory, small population, limited military and economic resources. And for them, it is very crucial how to find very alternative way to project power. I'm not the first who is um, pretending in front of you and here in Dublin that Europe is composed by small states. A former Prime Minister of Belgium and a former Secretary General of NATO, uh, Paul Henry Spack, said once, in Europe there are only small states, but some of them don't know this. <laughs> but Belgium is not a small state in compared to other small states in the Balkans. Let me give you an example. The total GDP of Belgium is bigger than the total GDP of all states in the Balkans. If we are using economy just as a parameter to measure the, 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 the power of, of, of different, of different uh, states. In my view, uh, small states are using smart, smart power because this is the best way, this is the only alternative, how to preserve the political existence and how to play a role in international politics. And in my view, different small states, even many of them who are part of Europe, are today playing a very crucial role in international politics. Some of them uh, promote peaceful resolution of conflicts. And I have been uh, amazed as a foreign minister uh, on daily basis to get information what kind of a role some of the European small states are playing today in different conflicts in the world. I mean, based on my, uh, on my daily communication with many foreign ministers, some of them are actually very much engaged in different global initiatives. For example, to reduce uh, poverty, and violence in different continents. And some others are promoting values related to uh, liberty and uh, democracy. I'm aware that uh, I'm in Ireland today, and I spend a lot of time, li li uh, and I spend a lot of time living in Austria. And in Austria, I was promoting for a pretty long time a kind of, uh, I mean, Austria was promoting itself as a neutral state in the world politics. But in my view, uh, in the today world, small states do not have a much of choice remaining neutral states in the classical sense. In my view, they are applying and they should apply a mixed foreign policy, which means establishing a strategic partnership with a superpower and with a regional or some regional powers, while preserving very good relations with neighbors and other states in, in distance. This is the best way for them how to benefit from the existing international, international uh, system. Kosovo 
and its um, foreign policy uh, today is um, uh, the foreign policy for Kosovo today is actually a very important instrument to uh, support and promote the national interest, but at the same time to support and promote uh, the interest of our, of, our, of our citizens. The consolidation of, uh, uh, of our statehood and the conduct of foreign policy were done under very difficult uh, uh, circumstances. As a small state, we arose from a violent dissolution of former Yugoslavia. And in the last 20 years, we experienced it, all the changes in the international system after the Cold War. Let me give here some example. We faced apartheid in 1990s, human rights violation, ethnic cleansings, genocide, and after uh, June 1999, we were put under the administration of the United Nations, and after declaration of independence in 2008, we were also put under the supervision by the international, by the international uh, community. Uh, tonight, I'm going to uh, present um, uh, some uh, key elements, actually four elements, uh, of uh, Kosovo's um, uh, smart power in foreign affairs and what we did in the last uh, uh, six years and what I did in the last three years as a foreign minister in order to uh, promote uh, our, our agenda in, in, in foreign, in foreign uh, policy. And the first uh, element which we used was our ability to attract international recognition and to get international support for membership in international and regional uh, organization. The second was the ability to normalize the relation with Serbia, uh, to resolve peacefully outstanding interstate issues, and to serve as a model for resolving other historic uh, challenges in the region. I'm, he I'm thinking here on Bosnia and on, on Macedonia. I mean, in Bosnia, the current uh, relation between different entities within the Bosnia and on Macedonia, the name issue between uh, Skopje and Athens. A third is the ability to overcome obstacles and to advance our Euro-Atlantic agenda through uh, proactive diplomacy and domestic uh, reforms. And fourth, the fourth element was the ability to change the image of Kosovo from a post-conflict place to an attractive place for international investments and, and tourism. In that uh, uh, matter, we did a um, pretty a good job in terms of promoting Kosovo as a, region as a regional model of secularism and interfaith, interfaith uh, tolerance through a very active public and digital, digital diplomacy. Uh, the, the first example of smart power, in our case, was the power how to attract international recognition for independent uh, Kosovo. State recognition is today one of the most unregulated, but at the same time, one of the most conservative aspects of the international politics and international uh, law. Uh, Kosovo is actually very proud that we were able in the last six years after the Declaration of Independence to achieve many individual recognitions which we cannot be compared with many other states in, in, in the world. For the time being, we have been recognized by 104 member states of the United Nations, and from 23 out of 28 member states of the European Union, from all neighbors in the region except, except uh, Serbia. As a, as a Minister of Foreign Affairs, I was um, focusing uh, my activities in seeking recognition at three levels. I was visiting ma main mul multilateral capitals, such uh, New York, Brussels, Geneva, Cairo, Jeddah, Gaborone, 
and others. Secondly, I was working with most influential states in the world, like United States, United Kingdom, Germany, France, and others. And third, I was traveling to individual countries that have not recognized Kosovo so far, and was trying to convince there in different capitals, prime ministers, um, uh, presidents, and, uh, and foreign ministers and others to take a positive decision and to recognize Kosovo. In the last three years, I was able to visit 65 states who have not yet recognized Kosovo, and I had more than 500 uh, bilateral meetings in different, in different parts of, of the world. But in each visit, in each continent, in each parts of the world, and this is very much related to the smart power, we were developing a very specific strategy how to present Kosovo, why a country should recognize Kosovo as an independent state. What I'm trying to say, in order to use a more simple term, we were using different narratives. We use another narrative in Africa, we use another narrative in Western Hemisphere, and if, if I was in Middle America, in Caribbean, I was using the narrative of the small states. Or if I met the members of uh, OIC, of Organization for Islamic uh, Cooperation, or Asia, Southeast Asia, we were using very different narratives at different parts of the world. That means we were using different strategies, how really to convince somebody to get uh, to get uh, a positive decision for, for independent uh, Kosovo. The second aspect of the, smart power, of the smart power has been the ability to get membership in different international organizations. When we declared independence in 2008, we were not part of any organization in the region and in the, in the world. And membership in different international organizations is very important to us in terms of strengthening our international position in terms of um, advancing um, our uh, state interest and playing a role at multilateral level. At the same time, membership in different international organizations uh, is uh, very important in terms of getting political and financial support from different, different organizations. We had many challenges, but beside many challenges, we were able in 2009 to get membership in World Bank and IMF, and we are very grateful to Ireland for supporting us in that matter. Uh, in 2012, we got the membership at ABRD, at European Bank for Development and Reconstruction. And last year, we got the membership at the Council of Europe Development Bank in, uh, in, uh, in Paris. At the same time, we were able to get membership in other 20 uh, regional and European organizations, but I'm not going to uh, bother you with uh, many other names of different organizations who exist in Europe and beyond, and beyond Europe. Very often, we were able to get the support in order to vote for Kosovo from countries who have not yet recognized uh, Kosovo. And again, here we develop a narrative. We were pretending that membership, our membership in these organizations is not about exercising sovereignty. It's not about status. It's not about independence. I told them it's primarily for economic and social reason. But I think you are aware that I'm, foreign minister doesn't care at the end of the day about these technical things. What matters to me is sovereignty. But it worked. I told them, I need your support to get the membership at ABRD, not because of strengthening our international position. I need your support to get the membership at ABRD because it's about growth in Kosovo. It's about development in Kosovo. Although uh, he was aware that a foreign minister was uh, talking, talking to him. Uh, in the last six years, we had a lot of achievement in terms of uh, international consolidation of our statehood. And this year we are planning to apply for membership of the Council of Europe. And of course, uh, our uh, goal is also to be a full member of United Nations, where we have uh, to think and rethink what we should put in our 
frame of a narrative how to explain to somebody why we need to get the membership there. I mean, why we need to get, uh, I mean, how to reach first consensus among countries who recognize Kosovo and then how to uh, convince other countries who did not recognize Kosovo to vote in favor of, to vote in favor of Kosovo. A third aspect of Kosovo smart power uh, is the advancement of our Euro-Atlantic agenda. Kosovo, in terms of um, history, in terms of geography, in terms of culture and identity, it is a European country. Our integration into European Union is, uh, our membership into the European Union is actually a return uh, back to, to, to Europe. And without uh, our integration into European Union and NATO, as a small state, we will remain um, forever a very vulner vulnerable in, uh, state. In that sense, I mean, uh, to us, it is among the most important strategic, strategic uh, priorities. But uh, the integration map in the Balkans, it is very, uh, complicated, very complex landscape. What I'm trying to say is that uh, there are different countries who are having different dynamics in terms of integration agenda. Some of them who started earlier are pretty uh, in good shape in terms of uh, getting the membership. Croatia's membership last year has uh, created actually a very good momentum uh, in the region uh, for uh, modernization and for reforms among, um, among uh, different, different uh, countries. But when it comes to our, uh, to our uh, integration agenda, uh, we are uh, pretty late on that because we, uh, are the, uh, we were the uh, last country who declared independence from former Yugoslavia, I mean in terms of uh, the Yugoslav breakup. Uh, the, at the same time, the process is pretty uh, complex because there are five member states who did not recognize Kosovo, like uh, Spain, uh, Slovakia, Romania, uh, Greece, and Cyprus, and they are shaping very much uh, uh, the uh, European agenda to, 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 to Kosovo. However, we are uh, very proud that uh, last year we were able to uh, start uh, negotiation for signing a stabilization association agreement with the European Union uh, last October. And uh, we are hoping uh, by the middle of this year to be able to sign that, uh, that, uh, that uh, agreement. Stabilization and association agreement uh, for Kosovo, it is very important in terms of first modernizing our political system. I mean, this is a modernization project. And to be very frank, um, very often in the Balkans, elites failed when it comes to the modernization. In my view, modernization is nothing else, just um, uh, frame how much you are able to compete with other nations in the world and to win competition or to be part of that, of that, uh, of that uh, competition. And um, signing a stabilization association agreement, it is for us, also the first possibility to start to modernize our, our country, to modernize our economy, and at the same time to transform our, to transform our society. Be beyond um, the European uh, context um, of this agreement, the agreement, it is very important to Kosovo because this is the first legal bilateral agreement between the European Union and independent, and independent, uh, independent Kosovo. More than that, what I learned in the last three years is that in the way how the European Union sees the Balkans, this is the way how the rest of the world sees the Balkans. That's meaning the way how somebody is reading the developments in Kosovo uh, from uh, Singapore or Australia or from uh, Guyana, 
uh, is actually what he's reading and, 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 and getting as a frame of understanding the events uh, what what is what what has been uh, uh, published um, and and written in, in in Brussels about 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 uh, about the Kosovo and about the Balkans? In that sense, I mean, signing a stabilization association <coughs> agreement between Kosovo and the European Union, it's a new reference to Kosovo, a new reference how the world is going to understand understand uh, Kosovo. In the last two years, we also uh, have started a dialogue on visa liberalization with the European <clears throat> Union. We are very proud that we were able to uh, reach the, uh, uh, to, to, to make a lot of reforms and to, uh, to reach many uh, uh, benchmarks. But at the same time, we are trying to achieve this goal in a time when there is a lot of skepticism in Europe towards migration. Uh, but we are trying to convince the uh, institutions in Brussels that, um, that we need to get a date in 2014 in order to make possible for the Kosovo citizens to travel, to travel visa uh, free. Frankly speaking, uh, the fact that Kosovo is today the most isolated country in the region in terms of visa free travel, it uh, makes uh, in our case, the visa liberalization a matter of human rights and a matter of and a matter of um, and a matter of, of human human uh, dignity. Um, I'll come to my uh, last um, aspect of uh, Kosovo smart uh, smart power, uh, which is very much uh, which is related to our ability to ensure uh, Kosovo's territorial integrity and international uh, sovereignty. Uh, we are very uh, proud that last year we were able to reach an agreement with um, uh, Ser Serbia in April uh, 2013. Uh, and with that agreement, uh, Serbia has um, accepted the existence of Kosovo as a state and also accepted our territorial integrity. And that agreement which we reached last year uh, has closed uh, a chapter of 100 years of old conflict between Kosovo and Serbia, and has also opened, in our view, uh, a new chapter of the relations between Kosovo and Serbia as two, as two independent, independent, um, independent uh, countries. We are very much interested not only to normalize with Serbia the relations at uh, political level, but we are very much uh, also to start a bilateral process of reconciliation between the two, between the two uh, societies. When we reached that agreement with Serbia in April uh, uh, 2013, we did this, of course, because of our citizens in terms of um, uh, providing them with uh, pre predictability and regulating the uh, relations with our uh, neighbor in, in, in the north. But we did this because of, of the region also. Uh, in the region, there are three historic challenges. The first historic challenge has been the relation between Kosovo and Serbia. Second, the situation in Bosnia. And third, the name issue between um, Skopje, Skopje, and 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 Athens, and we are uh, very uh, proud that in the last months we were able to organize the local elections in the north of Kosovo, and uh, to extend uh, the uh, public institutions of uh, Kosovo, and to integrate the Kosovo Serb community, community also in the north of in the north of um, uh, Kosovo. If I sum up uh, our approach in foreign affairs in the last uh, three years and, um, and the way how we were trying to use some of the instruments of the smart power in, a, in, in this lecture, I would mention uh, 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 shortly three, four elements how, how, how we did that. Uh, first, 
we were able to attract international attention and to be also very much engaged in a cooperation with the international democratic community. Secondly, we were able to generate uh, support. Uh, third, we were able to put ourselves in the map of states to be part of their uh, agenda. And fourth, we were also uh, able to play a role as a young state whenever it was necessary from Kosovo to take a, a role, a role uh, over. I will stop here. I'm aware that uh, talking about uh, uh, small power in a pretty late hour like today, it's a very complex um, uh, topic. But I'm very grateful to you for inviting me to, uh, tonight to share some of my thoughts on Kosovo's foreign policy. And of course, I'm more than interested to uh, uh, answer questions if you might have uh, questions on different issues related to Kosovo, but also, also to, to, to the region. Again, uh, we are very grateful to Irish people for supporting us massively. And um, in the Balkans, you have a young independent country on which you can, can count, count forever as a, as a, as a European uh, partner of, of Ireland.